This program is a part of a series of studies that our Pastor Gion has prepared for you. Welcome to Victory Church Odessa. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith by reflecting on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our Pastor Gian. Gospel Parallels, Episode 41, August 23, 2023. This is the Bible study with Victory Church, Odessa. Hello. Hello, my friend. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church, Odessa, and I am very pleased that you are connecting with us, especially today that I'm dedicating this episode to a wonderful servant of God, a dear friend, Reverend Pastor Dr. Ted Trailer. You are an amazing man. Everybody loves you, and you are a great example for thousands of people. And, well, I'm very pleased that you represent something in somebody that is, for me, an example, somebody to follow. And I am determined to, to do the best that I can to do many things like you do, Pastor Ted. And, well, as usual, my love for you, your wife, and the wonderful church, the Olive Baptist Church in Pensacola, Florida. Thank you. All right, friends. So today we are going to evaluate another beautiful passage of the Scripture, this time coming from the, the studies, gospel parallels that we have done. 40 episodes so far, and that today, actually, I want to invite you to go to our website, vchurch.us, and check all our platforms, video and audio, and then you can connect with uh, other episodes and other t type of videos that we release here. Absolutely. We studied last week the plucking grain on the Sabbath day. That was an interesting story. It has to do with the Sabbath, and today we are going to to study how a man that was paralyzed in one hand was healed by the Lord Jesus. The readings that we are going to present on the screen come from the easy-to-read version, and we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this study. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Jeho, please put full screen the scriptures that we are about to read. Matthew 12, 9 through 14. Jesus went from there to their synagogue. In the synagogue there was a man with a crippled hand. Some Jews there were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus of doing wrong. So they asked him, Is it right to heal on the Sabbath day? Jesus answered, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a ditch on the Sabbath day, you will take the sheep and help it out of the ditch. Surely a man is more important than a sheep. So it is right to do good on the Sabbath day. Then Jesus said to the man with the crippled hand, Hold out your hand. The man held out his hand, and it became well again, the same as the other hand. But the Pharisees left and made plans to kill Jesus. Mark 3, 1 through 6. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue. In the synagogue there was a man with a crippled hand. Some Jews there were watching Jesus closely. They were waiting to see if he would heal the man on a Sabbath day. They wanted to see Jesus do something wrong so that they could accuse him. Jesus said to the man with the crippled hand, Stand up here so that everyone can see you. Then Jesus asked the people, which is the right thing to do on the Sabbath day? To do good or to do evil? Is it, is it right to save a life or to destroy one? The people said nothing to answer him. Jesus looked at the people. He was angry, but he felt very sad because they were so stubborn. He said to the men, hold out your hand. The man held out his hand, and it was healed. 
Then the Pharisees left and made plans with the Herodians about a way to kill Jesus. Luke chapter 6, 6 through 11. On another Sabbath day, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught the people. A man with a crippled right hand was there. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees were watching Jesus closely. They were waiting to see if he would heal on the Sabbath day. They wanted to see him do something wrong so that they would accuse, they could accuse him. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. He said to the men with the crippled hand, Get up and stand here where everyone can see. The men got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is the right thing to do on the Sabbath day? To do good or to do evil? Is it right to save a life or to destroy one? Jesus looked around at all, the, all of them and then said to the men, Hold out your hand. The man held out his hand and he was healed. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law got so mad, they couldn't think straight. They talked to each other about what they could do to Jesus. <laughs> well, you know that the Lord Jesus was traveling all the time. And actually, in our previous episode, we studied when he was coming through the fields eating grain. And it was a huge problem for those Pharisees and some of the legalistic people because it was on a Sabbath. So the Lord Jesus knew what is what they were thinking. So it seems like he went directly to the synagogue intentionally. <laughs> and that cracks me up. It makes me laugh because, you know, sometimes imagine this. We Christians are the good people, right? We respect the laws. We drive the right way. Do uh, We do things correctly. In the workplace, we are compliant. We obey. We respect authority, etc. What is what happens? Well, when we are the, the good people, the bad people are always mocking us. And you know, sometimes they trick us. They try to make us look ridiculous because we are obedient and compliant. I know you as a believer, you have lived the same experience many times, right? Well, I have, you know, trying to follow the, the rules, doing things the right way. You know, I was the, the easy target for jokes. But, uh, well, personally, I decided time ago, I'm going to do something about this. And then is when I created a weekly satire. It's called Amathis.net. So here on the screen, please, Jeho, I want you to put the QR code and the website amathis.net for our viewers. So if you are curious about the type of sarcasm that I write, and we create this weekly with an image and a video with the talk of these characters that I created it, so you will understand what I am talking about. And the thing is, it is actually a good thing to laugh at certain things. And that is what I see here in the Lord Jesus. Because he was being confronted in the previous readings because his disciples were eating the, the, the grain that they were finding in the fields. I explained a lot of that in the previous episode, episode 40, I talk about that. But he had that in mind and he went directly to the synagogue of precisely the people that were accusing him then. So in other words, it's like this. The Lord God is looking at people, and they see what they are trying to do, to embarrass believers or to try to insult God through things. The Lord God is so smart that he just let them play their game, and then he comes with a comeback. And I just love that. Like in this case. Oh, imagine this. The Lord Jesus walking through the fields, people accusing his disciples of eating grain <laughs> from the fields. Here's the Lord Jesus thinking, uh-huh, I see your point. So you have a problem with my people eating 
on the Sabbath from, from, from the field. I'll show you what is what I do on Sabbath day. So he goes to the synagogue, right? You know that some of those Jews were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus of doing wrong things. And that is ridiculous. It's like today, people trying to accuse God of something like those that say, well, if God exists, why is it that there are so many poor people? Why is it that there are catastrophes and on and on? It's ridiculous. Because I promise you, everything has an explanation. It's not the point of this particular program to explain those things, but there is an explanation to everything. And if you have questions about it, I promise you, you will find the answer one day, even for your own life. Now, the thing is that they were closing him closely. They were watching him closely, sorry. Watching him closely. Why? Why? Well, to accuse him. To accuse him. And this is interesting because for believers, it's very common when they can perceive that there are people that are watching them closely. Sometimes it's a family. Imagine in a house where there is one believer and the rest are not believers. Everybody is just watching the believer to see if he is going to be a good boy or a good girl. And they try to trick them. Like these people were trying to trick Jesus, right? To see what is what he can do wrong. I mean, just, just the thought about it tells you right there. It's evil inside of those people. Same thing happens in the workplace. Have you noticed that in the workplace? Evildoers are always trying to set, set up the good person. It's common. And unfortunately, sometimes they get uh, their mission accomplished. Their evil missions, they do it. They get people fired. They get believers in trouble by accusing them or this and that. But I want you to know that the Lord Jesus always knows what they are thinking. And there is always a consequence to that. Any believer that gets into trouble because evildoers are setting up, I want you to know if that is your case, the Lord is going to save you and rescue you because the Lord God always wins. If you are a believer, you are on that team, the winner, the kingdom of God. So you don't worry about it. The Lord is going to do something. Let's watch what happens here afterwards. The Lord Jesus comes back with a question. Right? And the question is, is it right to heal on the Sabbath day? Actually, the, those guys ask the questions. But it's the same question the Lord Jesus asks. Is, is it right to heal somebody? And I just love the comeback. Remember this. The comeback. That shows intelligence. And that is something, my friend, that you as a believer need to appreciate, embrace, learn, and eventually apply. Those people were trying to make the Lord, the Lord Jesus look bad. Well, this is what the Lord does. He comes back with similar words and similar things to make them look bad. Nobody's going to make the look the Lord look ridiculous. So here's what the interesting thing. He, he gets the concept and he says to them, okay, let me ask you this question, guy. Is it really good to save a life or to destroy a life? Well, in other words, will you save your sheep from dying? Now, here, my friend, is where you are going to find the answer to most problems in this world. It's all about money. It's all about money. For some reason, these religious leaders and the Herodians and everybody against the Lord Jesus, they had something in mind. Mm, we can lose money here. You know, this reminds me of the story precisely with the Apostle Paul doing his missionary trips when there was in Ephesus a goddess, a false god, the pagans were giving money to this false god. And it was a huge commotion there. And the whole thing was that those people that they were making money out of this pagan, this false god, they were upset. Well, when you pay attention to most issues in life, when you pay close attention to why 
evildoers set up believers in the workplace or contractors and any type of things, even in the house sometimes, most of the time the reason behind is money. Aha! Uh -huh. So will you save your sheep? If it's about to die, the Lord asked. Do you think that those Pharisees and all these people, they really care for the law? No, for real, for real. You, do you think that if they see one of his, his assets, animal, cattle, whatever, about to be destroyed on Sabbath day, they will just say, no, I won't do that. No, it's, it's, it's Sabbath day. You know, I honor the Sabbath. <laughs> just the thought makes me laugh because they are dishonest. Religious people are dishonest. They apply different standards for themselves and for others. Uh-huh. And why is that? Money. That was the reason here. That's interesting, right? So this is what happened. When the Lord asked these questions, he, he immediately healed the men. He healed the men. You know, I want you to understand something here. The Lord Jesus was upset, mad, angry, and the same, at the same time, he was sad. Because people were not able to, to say anything about it. The Lord was expecting that somebody would say, Excuse me, Jesus, um, did you ask about the sheep? What, I, what would I do? Honestly, I want to be honest with you. I, I will say, I will save my sheep. You know, I will not let him go. I mean, I respect the law, okay? Like everybody else here, right? Do we respect the law here, right, guys? Everybody was, yeah. But will us let the, the sheep die, guys? Really? No, we won't. There you go. So you are right, Jesus. That was expected. It's when people are in the workplace witnessing the injustice, and the guy that is being the target of the evildoers is just looking at everybody as, okay, so who's going to say something here to back me up? Who's going to give me some support? And everybody's like, I don't see anything. I don't hear anything. I don't say anything. I need to take care of my own business. So I'm not going to say anything. The same thing. Dishonest people. When you as a believer, you see injustice in the workplace, or you see that there is injustice in a household, especially when it's about money, because, you know, believers are generous and compliant and responsible. They pay their duties. And there are others that they don't. They apply a double standard. I told you that, right? Well, if you see injustice in a place, you should speak out. You should say, hey, wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's think for a moment about this. Nobody said anything. The Lord Jesus said, okay, well, you know what, man? I'm going to heal you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. In fact, you know, that was the whole purpose of the Lord Jesus to come there, right there. You see what I'm saying about how smart he is, how intelligent is the Lord, and also his, stra his strategies. You think that things happen just because? C can you imagine the Lord God witnessing things and just say, oops, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that. There is always a plan. We, we have freedom. You have freedom to, to choose many things, but there is a plan for your life. If the Lord has a plan for your life, which always has, you are in that plan. No matter what happens to you, the Lord is going to act in your behalf. If you are misbehaving, if you are going in the wrong path, you're going to have consequences and still there. He can change things. But especially when it's about injustice and people taking advantage of believers, the Lord is going to do something about it. Okay? So here is the Lord Jesus. He knew what they were thinking. He knew their, that, that, that was their synagogue. So he said, okay. Okay. Hold out your hand, man. Okay. Let me heal you. And then in the presence of everybody, this guy who had a paralyzed hand, we don't know the shape. He was crippled, right? Whatever the shape was, it says that immediately the hand was healed, and it was exactly like the other. 
So now, people are witnessing the miracle, right? Probably they are clapping. Wow, that was awesome, Jesus. That was great. Except the Pharisees. They were so angry. They couldn't stand it. Because first of all, the argument the Lord Jesus presented it was the winner argument. No, people are more important than this law about the Sabbath. No, you are wrong. You only care for money. Okay? That was the argument. That was the, the way that the Lord Jesus beat them up with the argument and with words. They were already mad. And now the Lord heals the men in their synagogue. Like, your little law, your little legalism, your little viewpoint is not going to stop me to do what I need to do to show that I am the Son of God. Ha, ha, ha. Nobody can stop the Lord Jesus. Do you think that the laws in our country are going to stop the preaching of the gospel? Do you think that a, some dictator in some country is going to stop us, believers in the world, of preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Mm -mm. Blocking us on social media, stopping our internet services, hacking our websites. Do you think really that anything can stop the kingdom of God of advancement? Nothing and nobody can stop the Lord God. You are in the winner side, my friend. Now, one important thing is here. You heard me saying, and you read it before, that at some point the Lord Jesus was upset. He was angry. He was mad. Now, here we see that these people, these Pharisees also were mad. But what is the difference? So, is it okay for believers to get mad, but it's not okay to unbelievers to get mad? I mean, are we going to do the double standard too? No. Being upset, angry, mad, frustrated, sad, whatever, emotions. It's a human nature thing. We feel things. Sometimes we are extremely excited. Sometimes we are extremely angry. Sometimes we are so energized and sometimes we are so depressed. It, it has to do with the way the Lord God made us. He made you emotional. There is nothing wrong with your emotions. Actually, when you don't show emotion, that probably should be something that you need to evaluate with somebody, with some type of a specialist. I mean, there's something so fun and great and you cannot even smile. Something is not right in that picture. <laughs> don't you think? Something is really sad and you are just blow, no emotions. Mm. We are emotional beings. Of course, there are ones that exaggerate everything and others that contains too much. But the Lord Jesus was upset. The difference between how a believer gets mad and the unbeliever can control it is because they are not able to think straight. You can be mad at things. You see injustices in the world, in our country, in the political world. In the workplace, in your home, in your church, you see injustices everywhere. Of course, you're going to be upset about that. You're going to be mad. But not to the point that you cannot think straight. So what can you do, my friend, when you are upset and, and you are in that heated moment? What can you do? Important things. Breathe. They say count to... Ten. <laughs> One, two, etc. Oxygen helps your brain. Do you realize that? Even when you are sad. Have you noticed that when you are really upset for something dramatic like the death of somebody or whatever that just grabs you and you are sad, have you noticed the headache comes immediately? But and when you start breathing, oxygen comes to your brain. It helps. 
The other thing that will help you is when you get really upset with your spouse, with your children, with your parents, with your boss, uh, customer, whatever, with your pastor. <laughs> well, walk away. Go away somewhere and breathe. Give to yourself five minutes to be by yourself. You will see the big difference. I told you, believers should be smart. Be like the Lord Jesus. Intelligent people. Come on. You are a believer. You should show your intelligence. You cannot be dumb. You know, I admit it. I'm not the greatest of the greatest. I know I understand I have some level of intelligence. But honestly, I feel that I am just average. You want to hear something personal? I had never done my IQ test. And I confess the reason. I'm afraid. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, but I am afraid to realize that I am not too smart. So I thought, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be myself, whatever my IQ is. huh? In fact, I believe that I, I'm a little bit slow for certain things that I cannot understand. Although I speak several languages, and I know about many things, math and engineering, software, music, etc. Still, I feel that I am a little bit slow. I'm average, is how I feel. But my mama and my daddy, they taught me something important. is to be persistent and disciplined. So I never stopped working. I never stopped studying. Discipline, 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 and repetition, repetition. That helps. Okay? So, any believer can accomplish many things, but without discipline, it's not going to do it. But if you are a good believer, smart, you have to apply this principle. When you get, or re get really upset about something, you are mad, you are not going to explode. You are going to breathe, Go somewhere and take it easy to become reasonable. Now, these guys, these Pharisees, they were so mad. They wanted to go and find somebody else to attack the Lord Jesus. How interesting, huh? Always, always, you know, like I always say, wolves are going to hang out with wolves. But let's talk about the man who was healed. Did his life change? <laughs> what a question, right? Okay, for a moment, let's put the first aside. Let's put the Lord Jesus aside. Everybody aside. Just let's focus on this guy who was healed. Okay? Did his life change? You bet. This guy wasn't able to do many things, whatever the hand was. Write, call things, work like everybody else. You know, remember back in those days, intellectual work was not precisely popular. You know, there was no need for writers or software developers <laughs> or nothing that was intellectual, really. Everything was done with your hands, with your body. It was a lot of labor work. So probably this guy felt really bad about that. Now, suddenly he has both hands, working hands, he was just thinking, I cannot wait to start working. Not because of the money. It's because I always wanted to work, and I couldn't. His life changed. Can you imagine every day waking up in the middle of the night? Suddenly, he, he, he's scratching his head, waking up. Oh, what? Oh, my gosh, my hand is healed. Oh, yes, thank you, Jesus. Hey, honey, can you bring me something to, to eat or to drink? Sure. And he comes with the plate and the glass. And the wife says, you can carry stuff easily now. Yes, I can. Imagine the children. Now this man was able to grab the hands, the heads and the faces of these little ones. And I love you so much, daughter. And the little girl, right, with his hands around, saying, Daddy, you never touched my hand like my face like this before. I know, sweetheart. 
Did his life change? Of course. That is what happens when Jesus touches you. Your life changes. When the Lord Jesus touches your life, my friend, your life is going to change. You are going to feel different. and You are going to act differently. But let's talk now about the rest of the people who witnessed the miracle. Were they upset at the Pharisees and focused on that? Or did they rejoice in Jesus being so wonderful? So let's talk about the, those people in, imagine, today's world. Today's church. Today's believers. There are many injustices. There are many Pharisees and people against the church and against Jesus. But the point is, is it correct for people to be so angry at those that are attacking Jesus and the church? And they are just so focused on that that they can't rejoice seeing Jesus being so wonderful. There is no day that I don't see something that is really aggravating from evildoers against the church and against good, decent people in the world. No day. No one day. Every day is pretty much the same idea, right? Evildoers attacking and doing wrong things. But the question is, you, my friend, are you so aggravated for the wrong things in the world that you cannot rejoice seeing the Lord Jesus being so wonderful? But I, I promise you that there were two people here, two groups of people. One group were the ones that are always hurting. And have you noticed how these people are always hurting for something? And they immediately come to you to say, did you hear about what happened somewhere? Did you hear about what they did? And I'm so mad at this. And they tell you the reason why they are upset. And you say, well, they are right. To a certain degree, they are right. A little bit exaggerated, but I can understand this. They are sensitive people. Okay. And the next day, they come back with the different things. And the next day, and the next day, and suddenly you see the pattern. They are always hurting for something. They never see the great things happening in the world that the Lord Jesus is doing. They can never see how many people are being saved. They can never see how many great teachings, great preachers, great servants of God are doing all over the world. They can't see that. They are focused only on the bad things. That, that is one group of people. The other group are the others that they, they knew about the evildoers. It's not that they don't care. Honestly, what they can do really. Things that are happening in Ukraine, things that are happening in, in North Korea, things that are happening in Cuba, things that are happening here in our country that are really aggravating. But what can you do? Most of the time you cannot do much other than praying for them. Perhaps send them a little contribution to some sort of... A, organization. I saw once uh, a, a movie that it was something so funny. I will try to explain to you what I saw. It's the conversation between two people, two guys. And one is kind of a weird guy. And he's changing, right? So it's Jack Nicholson in this movie, right? So Jack Nicholson is trying to to become a, a much nicer person, you know? But the other guy, Cuba, the other actor, is excited to see the changes in Jack, right? So he says, I, I see that you're coming along, that you're changing, you are becoming a great people, great person. <laughs> Jack Nicholson says, enough with this, go away, I need to finish my breakfast. So <laughs> Cuba sees him, and it gets upset and says, do me a favor. He, he gets up and says, do me a favor. If you find about, find out about any organization that helps people with the mental problems you have, please let me know. I'm going to give some contribution to that organization. <laughs> okay, never mind. All right, the point is this. Sometimes, friends, good people are not going to be focusing 
totally on the wrong things in the world because you cannot do much about it other than praying for them and sending them a contribution once in a while. But those people are the ones that they can see the greatness of God in everything. How about you? Are you so aggravated for all the problems in the world? Are you so aggravated for the injustices toward your children, your spouse, your parents, grandparents? What happened, uh, I don't know, in Argentina by the Nazis? <laughs> Are you aggravated for the injustices that you see right now in some parts of the country that you cannot even enjoy a cup of coffee? You are about to eat, and then, here we go, talking about all the bad things in the world. And, the, and you say, one day in heaven. But it's not like a <laughs> statement of hope. Mainly it's like, I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> you have to be careful, my friend. There are bad things in this world. There are many ugly individuals. You cannot focus on that. Now, how about the family of the one who was healed? You, you can imagine that. The family of this guy who was healed, <laughs> they were thrilled. Think about everything. For example, those who were helping financially, materially speaking, to this family. They felt great about that because deep down they felt it was a burden. They did it because they loved the guy in the family, but they thought... Well, that is great. Now I don't need to give money anymore to this guy. He can take care of himself <laughs> to begin with, right? Those that were helping materially, financially, felt a great relief. Now, the ones that are closer to him, that knew him, that he was such a great person, someone that goes to church even though was sick and paralyzed, crippled. Did you hear that? He was in the synagogue, even though he was ill. Aha. Uh -huh. Hello. Attention. Attention shoppers. Are you listening? He was ill, crippled, paralyzed, and yet he was in the presence of God. What does that tell you? It's a person with faith. Not blaming God, not fighting against the Lord, but being there because it's the right thing to do. Whether you are healed or not, you go to church to hear the word of God, to be encouraged. Because after all, what is more important? Isn't it your soul, the thing that you should treasure the most in your life? <laughs> so people knew that he was a believer. And as a such, he was doing the things that a good believer will do. So all the family around, they said, thank you, Lord God. You healed my brother. You healed my, my cousin. You healed my brother-in-law, my, my son-in-law. You imagine the mother. Thank you, Lord God. You healed my son. My son. Can you imagine the wife? Let me tell you, this miracle transformed a lot of people. They were all rejoicing. That was something amazing. And finally, let me ask you this. What do you think he did afterwards? So this guy wasn't able to do many things. But what do you think he did afterwards? Let's talk about, for example, his participation in the synagogue. Do you think this guy said, well, now that I'm healed, I'm, I don't need to come back to the synagogue because I am healed. I can do whatever I want next weekend. I'm taking a trip. <laughs> well, that is what people do, right? They receive a miracle. The first thing they do, they take off. <laughs> they forget about the Lord. They don't come back to give thanks. They don't worship God anymore. I got my miracle. I got the money. I got the healing. I, I got, I got, I got. Thank God. Bye, bye, baby. Wow. <laughs> do you really think this guy is what he did? I don't think so. In fact, he came back again and again and again. He was so committed, not just with his presence, but service, devotion, and money. 
Ah, you got upset. You don't want me to talk to you about money. You have an issue with money. Gianna, stop talking about it. I don't want to hear it. Well, I don't care if you don't want to hear it. You're going to hear it. It's your job to show your faith and gratitude to the Lord by giving to the Lord in your local church. Besides that, the time came when the Lord Jesus died eventually on Calvary. Now, let me ask you this question. You are this man. You were healed. You were paralyzed. Your hands are nice. You have your family. Your work. Your life is great. And then you hear the news that the man who healed you is about to be crucified. What would you do? You stay home? You take another trip? You hide? I don't think so. You will go to see what's going on. And then you see soldiers against Jesus, healing him. He's bleeding, crucified, about to die, people insulting him. What would you do? I promise you, if, if that man was there, which I think he was, there were many people grabbing him, saying, don't go, don't go. Bobby, don't go. Don't go. It's God's will. We don't understand. But don't go. And he was crying. Like every other believer who received a miracle, they saw the Lord Jesus suffering on Calvary until he died. And he was devastated, thinking, what just happened here? Well, I told you earlier, the Lord God has a plan for everything, for everybody. And the plan was precisely that the Lord Jesus will die that way to rescue us. To pay the price for our forgiveness, eternal life. And then suddenly the news. Here is this guy, sad, three days later. Are you going to eat, honey? I'm not hungry. Drink, drink some tea. You have to rest. You have not slept well in the last three days. I just can't believe it. I know, I know. Everybody around understanding his feelings. And then somebody suddenly comes to the door. Bobby, Bobby, have you heard? What? Have you heard the news? What? He is alive. Who? Jesus is alive. Are you serious? Yes, he is alive. This is what he said he will do. The, the life of this man was changed, my friend. Jesus touched him, healed him, transformed his life, everybody around him. His death was devastating. The pain and the sufferings of the Messiah were real and hurts when you think about it. But that's not the end. That's not it. He has risen. And when he is back in life. And he knows about it. He goes and tries to find out where he is. There are over 500 witnesses of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bet this guy, he found that until he saw him. Because you will do it. I will do it. Anybody will do it. Being healed by the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll go with you. And then he hears the commandment. Go and make disciples. Baptize them. And teach them everything I have told you. Until the day that I'll come back. You say, I'll do it. That's what I'll do with the rest of my life. I was crippled. But now I'm healed. How about you? I'll do what you want me to do, Lord. Make disciples, share the good news, baptize them, and teach them what you have taught me. This is what I have for you today, my friend. Episode 41 of Gospel Parables. I love you very much. My prayers for 
excellence in everything you do for the glory of God. See you next week. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Geon TV app. With the Geon TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By G and Carlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Welcome to this website, MyNewMentor.com. Here you will find the tools to establish a direct communication with your new mentor, Gian. Get the available spot on Gian's schedule and set your appointment to have an audio or video call via Skype with Gian. Do you like new movies, new books, new music? Go to MyGiancarlo.com. There is a new album, Adore, 10 songs. I wrote the songs and I sing those songs with a wonderful band of musicians and singers. If you sign up in MyGiancarlo.com, I will give you one song for free. Take advantage of this free song and enjoy this wonderful production. The blessings of God are going to come to you when you are listening to the right thing, God's Word. You can find us in all of these platforms. Search for Gian TV on Apple TV, Roku TV, and Fire TV. Do you prefer a podcast? Find us too. And remember Victory Radio 24-7. The kingdom of God is near. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.